Hey folks, Todd Colburn here <clears throat> with your aerospace structure series. This lecture is on shear stress and beams. It's actually a supplement for our primary lecture. And with this, we're going to kind of drill through some ideas to drive these concepts home. Stay tuned. So let's take a look at an eye section fastened together with a couple nails. If we want to determine the force in the nails, let's focus on that upper nail. What we're going to need to do is locate the centroid of the piece first. We're going to then, once we locate the centroid that's located right at the middle, we then are going to draw a line through the plane of where these two members are held together by that nail, which is right here, parallel to the centroidal axis and through the plane. Now we're seeing here, uh, we're imagining we have a downward shear force. If we have a downward shear force, we draw a line perpendicular to the action of the shear force. That downward shear force is causing bending about the x-axis. So we're going to need a line parallel to the x-axis through the nail. We can see that the center of this section is at the middle point at uh, 50 millimeters. So the first moment of the area we're going to actually calculate the area of the shaded piece so 0.1 meters times 0.02 meters is the area and we multiply that by 0.07 oh, 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 006 meters right because we've got 50 millimeters in the web plus 10 millimeters to the middle of the to the centroid of that piece from the centroid of the whole section that's the distance we're going to need multiplied by the area to get the first moment of that area our shear force then is that shear flow v q over i multiplied by the spacing of these fasteners going into the page so the downward shear force v divided by the moment of inertia about the x-axis uh, times the q of that area about the centroidal axis multiplied by the spacing if we wanted to know what the max shear stress was we would then go and calculate the q at the centroid of the section so now we draw a line through the centroid of the section and we need the q for everything above that now the easiest way to do that we already calculated the q for that first flange that upper flange all we need to do is calculate the q of that web and add it so that height is uh, 0 0.05 meters the width is 0 0.02 meters and the y bar to the centroid of that element is uh, 0.05 over 2. And we take that q and add that to our first q. That's the total q we're going to need in our vq over i equation. And if we want to get our shear flow, then if we want the shear stress, we divide by that perpendicular width, the width that's perpendicular to the action of the shear force which is that thickness 0 0.02 meters. If we want to have the equation for the shear force in the lower nail, we would do this exactly the same way as we did before. We now have the lower piece. Our Q is actually negative, but we would typically ignore that because all we're looking for is the magnitude. It's the same Q be due to symmetry. It's gonna have the same Q as that upper flange we analyzed first, okay? Here's another little example. Uh, if we have a section like this, if we want to know what the shear force is in the upper left nail, we're going to actually first draw a line separating that. Now we could actually, if you have more knowledge about this, just calculate the Q feeding that nail. But the easiest way to do this when you recognize symmetry is to draw a line cutting off not only the nail we want, but also the corresponding other nail. If we move, draw, looking where the shear, uh, where the CG of this is, right through the center of the section, once again, if we have a downward shear force, where our centroid that we need is perpendicular to that force, and as we move away from the centroid, we're going to cut off everything away from the centroid. And the easiest way is to take advantage of symmetry and cut both nails. We now have uh, can shade our area we're going to calculate the Q for. That's this piece. That's 3 inches times 0.75 inches 
times, and now what we have is that 4.5 dimension over 2 is the half height minus that 0.75 over 2 takes us to the middle, that dimension from the centroid to the middle of that piece is the y that we need in that area times y of the q equation. Once we have q, our shear flow is going to be vq over i, but now we have two load paths, two nails we need to cut, so we're going to divide that by 2. And then to get the shear force, we're going to multiply that quantity by the spacing of those nails going into the page. If we wanted the max shear stress for this guy, once again, we're going to draw a horizontal line through the centroid of the section. We're going to shade everything above that. And now we already had the first Q of that middlemost piece. All we need is the Q of each of those two legs which means 4.5 over 2 is the dimension here, times the width 0.75 inches, times 4.5 over 2 over 2, which is the distance from the centroid to the center of that. That's your Q. Now that's the Q of one leg, and actually both legs have the same Q, so we have that upper Q that we already calculated, plus these two side Qs, add those all together using the plus button on our calculator, gives us the total Q for everything above the centroid. We now take that Q in our VQ over I T equation. But now we got to think, wait a minute, VQ over I, and we say, what is the horizontal width of the beam perpendicular to our shear force? And if we cut through the members, you'll notice we cut through 0.75 over here and 0.75 over here. So it's 2 times 0.75 is what goes into that T dimension down below. Got that? Or T in this case is just 0.75. If we wanted the equation for the shear force in the lower right nails, we would do that in the same way as we did the upper nail by separating off that piece. Since this is symmetric, that will give us the exact same equation and magnitude. Got it? How about this guy? <clears throat> If we had this one, this looks harder, but it's really not. Once again, if we want to know what the force is in those bolts, we're going to start by locating the centroid of the section. That's going to be right at the middle. We then would draw a line cutting off that upper piece from the beam. We calculate the Q of that, which is the area of that, times the Y, the distance to the from the center of that element to the centroid of the section. That's the big Q we need. We plug that into our VQ over I equation, and once again we have two nails. We have That means we have two load paths, so we divide by two. Then we multiply by the spacing going into the page, and that gives us the force per fastener. If we wanted the max shear stress for this guy, once again we're going to draw a line through the centroid. We're going to calculate the Q for everything above that line. We take that already had one of those, and we can calculate the other two members and add the cues for all three of those. This one is if we have a welded piece. Now, if we want the, the uh, shear force in the upper weld, we actually can do that with the shear flow equation. Once again, we're going to cut this member through that weld, and it'll be easiest if we cut through both welds. We now calculate the Q of that plate, that upper plate, which is 0.22 times 0 0.012 and multiply by the distance from the middle of that plate, which is located there at uh, 0 0.012 over 2 from the top down to the centroid of the section. And that gives us two paths. So it's VQ over 2I times the, uh, the spacing. If these were spot welds, that would be the spacing of the spot welds. If that was a continuous weld, we could just do VQ over I, over 2I, which would give us the shear flow. And then we could just uh, take that shear flow and divide it by our H dimension of the weld. We won't learn about that until structures two. This one, if we wanted to calculate the shear stress at this point here, we would just cut this beam off right through that piece. And then we would take a uh, take the, the Q of the all the two pieces that are above that, right? There are two pieces. We calculate the Q of each one, add them together, 
and we now have one load path, BQ over I, and the T we need is that thickness of the web, the vertical web. So those are some conceptual ideas that can help you to drive some of those principles for shear stresses and shear flows home. Study this. There's one more video on uh, an example problem that you might want to take a look at. Enjoy.